You might wonder how I got involved with uh, magnetic displacement analyzation. Uh, it really started when I was a UFO investigator, and this is a, uh, uh, I don't know where I got this. This is a, a thing about Nazi UFOs, whether it's true or not, I can't tell you. But it was an interesting drawing showing the magnetic field coming out of the pole piece. So there was a lot of uh, uh, similar pictures like that around, and uh, so there was a program called In Process, and you can download it right here. But what's unique about In Process is that you can shuffle the palette, you can do a random shuffle of the colors, the things you could not see. So this was uh, one of the photos that was out there. And, you know, there was uh, quite a few others. And this doesn't mean it's true, but, you know, these were very interesting. This is called the Bell uh, type uh, German Nazi uh, UFO. There was something on Discovery Channel. Also, I started working on NASA data from Mars, and these are the so-called trees in the Mars subdivision. Very interesting. Uh, are these trees or not? It's very interesting. Take a look at the layout. It looks like uh, not random whatsoever, does it? And uh, so, um, also, uh, there was this interesting feature here. Uh, uh, looks like a complex of objects. Uh, Mars actually has five times the surface of Earth, even though it's not as big a diameter. But remember, there's no seas or oceans, so you have much more surface area. There are really about 200,000 out there. The key is to get good quality. I found three of these objects within a 10 a square mile uh, area on Mars, and I had it noticed back about 1993. Then I turned my attention to video, especially NASA video. This is the STS-48 mission. You see the object that's very bright on that side. Um, the crew cabin is right there in front, and the bay is right in back here. And um, so I applied this in-process technique again, and you can see that reddish swirl there around the, uh, from the object going up and that. Um, it's just amazing what you can do. And uh, so um, I uh, refined this and refined this. Actually, I published a paper at that time was called DX Tele Labs. And I was making basically Mission Impossible receiving equipment for uh, repeating TV. Uh, and uh, so this is a, a, a paper, a simple paper I published on this, and um, you'll see a little bit clearer. It's the same photos you saw before, but I just shuffled the palette differently. That's what's so unique about this. And you might miss it on one type of uh, palette shuffle, but you find there. Then in 1997, I was the lead investigator for MUFON here in Phoenix for the Phoenix Lights. Whatever you think you know about the Phoenix Lights, you don't. Uh, it has been lies told by the media, people who want to make money. I have the only video that exists uh, of, the, of the objects flying fronted down to uh, Casa Grande, Arizona. I published my findings about the flares, which was the 10 o'clock. That's become the de facto standard of the Phoenix Light, was flares from the Maryland National Guard. So I published this, and this was my big downfall, because UFO groups do not want to have any solution on extraterrestrial. And so they were not happy with me about saying these were flares, and then five months later I was verified by another investigation. So this is where I got my background on doing this. And so we're going to apply this uh, information to uh, the Starship uh, Rodin. Now we're going to use actually convert monitor uh, uh, to show the magnetic pattern. And most monitors either can be, the, you can shut off the blue and green by the menu, or you can, there's a bunch of controls on the back. This one doesn't have that. So I had to cut loose one of these resistors, and I would rather have a red field to work with, but unfortunately, uh, the way this was designed, uh, I only have a blue field. But it still works out real well, as you're going to see. Uh, the red field is just more sensitive. Uh, and so there's the one resistor I lifted there. And uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to look at the focus block. I call it the focus block. And the top controls the focus. And the bottom one is the screen, or it's the master brightness. You don't want to have that thing really bright. You want to have it kind of dim. There's a close-up of it. And uh, so uh, we're going to come up here. We're going to show you, uh, first of all, standard mode. And, and I don't know what happened to my picture showing you that pattern. It's, it's identical on the initial test to the Starship one. So uh, I worked, I need to make one of the same standards. So here's the pattern uh, produced, magnetic pa field pattern produced by the Starship uh, rodent. And I said <coughs> it was the same as the rodent I had wound. And here's a video of me 
uh, using it as a degausser. What I'm running is 18 volts AC into the coil and removing that green spot in the center. You're going to see that completely disappear in just a minute. And you should use a regular DV cam camcorder, not a high definition for this, because there's a beat frequency between the scan frequency of the, the monitor and the, and the camera. Uh, you can buy some high definition cameras for $8.95 directly from China that work just fantastic for this. I'll show you one of those later on. And there's the pull pattern left by the thing. Now I'm going to degauss that. And I'm using a little 18 volt transformer AC. And I'm um, going to uh, remove those <coughs> marks there. If you cut the power off while you have the DC on there, or even the AC, abruptly it'll produce a real neat pattern. Now you've seen all that, all that discoloration is gone. Now we're going to hook up a 5 volt DC. And this is probably not really well filtered. So it's either 60 uh, pulsing 60 cycles DC or 120 if it has a full wave bridge. And here you're going to see it uh, producing uh, a pattern again. And I'm going to show you this is the, the still I took it of it. And uh, so um, that's really uh, what I am doing um, today with uh, uh, this pad. Now we're going to take this same coil, you can use a regular rodent coil or the, the Starship rodent coil, and we're going to put it on the neck of the monitor the next time. And when we do that, um, 